Okay, good afternoon, Marketing 635. This is Steve Spies. I'm presenting from my hotel room in Germany. And today I'm going to talk about sales conversion rate analysis and what I learned from my visit last month to Chapman Dodge, a car dealership in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, you can check them out online at www.lasvegasdodge.com. Uh, so what are conversion rates and why are they important? Uh, well, conversion rates are the statistical conversion of leads to close sales and all waypoints between. Uh, this process can vary greatly from organization to organization. In my experience as an Army recruiting company commander, uh, poor conversion data can be indicative of poor work ethic, and it might even get you fired. Uh, in the car sales business, managers have a lot more performance incentives in their toolkits, uh, like paying commission and bonuses. Uh, so conversion standards are not such a coercive tool, uh, but they still characterize the cost effectiveness of a sales team, and they're still essential for managers to allocate the resources effectively. Uh, so conversion data gives sales managers an idea about the productivity of their staff at specific coachable tasks, uh, which can be approved upon to basically keep a sales organization from wasting time and money. A car salesperson can get someone into the showroom uh, but then find that they cannot close the deal because this prospect never had the capability or intent to buy the car. Uh, now they probably could have figured this out by asking the right questions when they first walked into the showroom or during a 30 second phone conversation before they showed up. But because of poor process controls, your team may be wasting time and money on pursuing sales that were never going to happen. Or maybe your sales staff are saying they are getting poor results from the leads they have. Uh, well, is it really the leads? Or is it the sales team? Uh, conversion data will tell you this. Uh, to use an illustrative example, soup to nuts, uh, let's say that your marketing department has generated 100 leads. And these are from an expensive advertising campaign and, and they turn these leads over to you as the sales manager. And so they're distributed amongst your sales staff based on uh, geography, demographics, or some other rationale. In the same of a in, in the case of a car dealership, uh, for example, you might have to consider language capability in some markets. Uh, the conversion process starts before a single one of these leads is contacted by a salesperson. So leads must be pre-qualified in order to determine whether they have the intent to just get more data uh, because we know occasionally marketers get bad data. Uh, you know when they call you at, at night and try to sell you a product that you never you know had any interest in and whether they have the capability to actually purchase your product or service so perhaps uh, they can't afford your product or they're too young to legally purchase it uh, you can sometimes get this information through public sources like social networks and sometimes you can spot obvious fake names or duplicate names um, as in the case of contest entries and you can screen these out. Or sometimes your sales staff will just recognize a lead as someone unqualified uh, they have dealt with before in the past. Uh, so most of the time you just won't know until you contact them or they walk in. Uh, for the purpose of the illustration, let's say that of those 100 leads, 10 are found to be unqualified, uh, giving unqualified to qualified leads a conversion rate of 90%, which is pretty good. So you as a sales manager, you give that feedback uh, to marketing and um, as you see uh, that lead go from lead to prospect to applicant to close sale uh, that funnel gets smaller and smaller as there's attrition at every level so next your sales staff will take that qualified lead data and any useful blueprinting information that they may have acquired and attempt contact through the appropriate channel now that could be telephonic could be email could be face-to-face -face calling, as in the case of fleet sales. Uh, Chapman Dodge sells to Costco and, and all the major fleets. Uh, so some organizations, they track attempts to contact versus successful contacts as a conversion metric. Uh, this can theoretically give you insight as to the most effective prospecting times and channels for various demographics. Also, many organizations track both appointments made from contacted leads and, and keep, they keep those metrics as a way to measure efficiency. Uh, the problem with this data is that you may not be able to make an appointment with a contacted prospect, but that prospect might just walk into your office on their own. Uh, do you count that as an appointment? Uh, do you count that as a success? 
Uh, of course, many of the appointments you make will fail to show up. Uh, to what extent do you fault the salesperson for not validating the appointment? Uh, there's a bit of a moral hazard here too, that your underperforming sales reps may just record fraudulent appointments in order to give the appearance of a strong work ethic, when in reality they're just counting on the walk-in traffic to make their numbers. Um, at Chapman Dodge, they actually have a separate sales team that handles uh, the online inquiries and appointments and kept separate conversion data and separate sales funnels, which is interesting. So even in the case that your sales team can rely upon walking traffic for new leads, the same process has to be followed to qualify these leads and really the same data is collected. Uh, you convert these leads uh, to prospect to applicant to contract. Uh, poor conversion at that end might mean that you need to do some coaching on closing techniques. Uh, so if you've ever seen the, the movie uh, Glenn, Gary, Glenn Ross, you remember ABC, always be closing. Uh, some salespersons have a great talent for closing, and there are many coachable techniques out there. Uh, admittedly, it's been almost 10 years since I've purchased a vehicle from a dealer, and a lot has changed in the industry. And what I was most interested in is how the internet has changed the way in which car sales are closed. Uh, so because of eBay Motors, Craigslist, and other mass online markets, new cars have been somewhat commoditized, and smart consumers can very quickly find the lowest prices for what what product they want. Uh, Best Buy has been hit hard by this, uh, something that has been called the showroom effect. Uh, so consumers go to the store, they check out the products, and when they figure out what they want, they just scan the, the barcode with their smartphone and they can quickly find uh, the lowest price online, often at Amazon.com or other retailers with much lower overhead than your freaking order retailer. Uh, so, how are car dealers differentiating themselves from the cheapest price on the internet, and how does that factor into uh, conversion rate analysis? Uh, well, for one, contrary to, to popular belief, margins are razor thin on car sales. Uh, new car pricing is often subject to manufacturer price maintenance, uh, but used car sales can fluctuate much more to match online quotes. Uh, Chapman Dodge actually uses a high-low pricing strategy and they will quite frequently sell a car for less than cost in order to make up for the loss in after-sale service like parts, warranty, and repeat business. The idea being that if you treat your customers well, they will keep coming back. Um, car dealers, they do not only make money off of car sales. Chapman Dodge has a huge parts warehouse and I've been told they're one of the top 10 uh, Mopar distributors in the region. And while we tend to think of carrying a bunch of inventory like this as a liability, over 25% of their income is actually from part sales. Uh, so not just to warranty vehicles or in installing dealer options, but to Napa Auto Parts in the region, service stations, and even to competing dealerships with a hefty markup, of course. Uh, so as profit moves to the right of the sale and sales funnels become more complicated with multiple channels uh, we're seeing sales management and customer relationship management becoming more integrated in the car sales industry uh, sales managers are figuring things like customer lifetime value into the resource allocation strategies and because the industry is becoming more complicated there are more parties involved at, at every step in uh, the process of capturing value from a customer. Uh, so from the sales floor to the back office for financing to the service department, a car buyer might have to deal with five different parties to get the car they want. Um, and anywhere along that line, something might go wrong. Uh, so it is important that non-sales staff understand that they are stakeholders in the sales process and for sales managers to properly collect and analyze that conversion data. Uh, so that summarizes what I hope to discuss today. Regarding sales conversion rates, uh, again, I'm Steve Spies, and if you have any questions or comments about this topic, please comment online or email me at sssp.eeece at bsu.edu. Thank you very much.